Hi everyone. So I was just walking through my garden and it, I don't know where you are, how the weather is, but it is April here where I'm at right now, April 2024. And it's 95 degrees outside right now. It is toasty warm um, afternoon here. So it is the end of the day. So it's starting to cool down a little bit, but man, what a hot day today. So, but while I was walking through my garden, I saw my evening primrose and it reminded me it's pink evening primrose and I'll put some pictures up on it. I was actually going to do the video out where it's at, but one, it's loud and two, it is hot. It's right in the direct sun right now. So I came back here to do it back here because there's no way I was going to sit out there and do that. So, um, but it reminded me of why I planted, um, the pink evening primrose. So when things hit the fan back in 2020, I was really focused on putting things in my garden that were edible like if if push comes to shove I need to be able to have food in my garden because there was nothing worse than the feeling of wondering like am I gonna have enough food and that was like the worst feeling ever and I don't ever want to feel like that again and I've been gardening for years I just did I just didn't do it on a very large scale at that point when I really bumped up my production but um my dogs are wrestling they're going crazy right now um, so evening primrose, I'm in zone, growing zone 9A, I'm in low desert, it gets hot, and this thing still thrives for me here. So my focus when I was putting together, you know, things into my garden was, one, I wanted something that I didn't have to dump fertilizer on, like I wanted to be able to be left alone, and it still survive, and it still do good. And that definitely met that check mark. Check mark. So, um, two, I wanted something that, it's always good to like have medicinal stuff um you know plants that have medicinal values which evening the pink evening primrose does so i want to say like the most common primrose probably the one they use the most especially for like um making this the oils uh evening primrose oil or evening primrose capsules um are usually the yellow primrose but the pink primrose also has um the same medicinal values so I can't, unfortunately, I've tried one several years back to try the uh, yellow evening primrose. It did not grow for me. And, um, you guys be careful. And, um, so it didn't. But this pink evening primrose has done fantastic for me. It's just probably just better suited for my client, or climate. So, one thing to know about evening, uh, the pink evening primrose, I don't, I can't speak on the yellow um, evening primrose, but the pink evening primrose which is also called like um why am i having a brain fart any case um oh the bugs are coming out so um sorry excuse my dogs so um when you go to plant this note that it's probably going to spread so you want it to put it in an area that you will allow it to just go out so i had planted it we have a tractor up in the front and this is a really old tractor and it's got the bucket um, on the front of it. And so I had put dirt in there and popped it in there. Um, and it has spread outside of that planter and has gone into the adjoining um, flower bed area. And I'm just letting it go. It's fine with me that it's spreading. It's not a problem for me. But if that's something that you're not um, willing to deal with, then this is probably not the plant for you because it will 100% spread. It is not the easiest thing to kill, which is why I planted it. But um, they're playing in the water. So if you hear water, that's my doggies playing in their little pool over here. So um, so if you, it spreads by rhizome, so it will definitely spread. And actually last, uh, it's probably been about two or three weeks now, I actually put mulch on top of it. And those buggers just popped right through and started growing. And it's now looking beautiful with these little pink flowers on it. I just love them. So definitely something to consider if you are... Um, looking to plant stuff that come back year after year that has got multiple purposes whether it be for eating as well as medicinal definitely a good plant to look into so now my opinion on the plant the so the entire plant is edible so from the flower the um seeds the leaves the root everything is edible on this plant now the flower itself tastes like lettuce and it does it's fine inside of a salad the leaves need to be eaten when they're younger and um, a lot of times they'll actually cook them up as well as the root will also need to be cooked 
not a huge fan of the leaves and the roots, but if once again, if push comes to shove, there's something there for us to eat, which is really important for me because, you know, you never, you just never know. It's a crazy world. So I never thought I'd be here, you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, thinking that this would be a conversation I'm having with people on YouTube, <laughs> but here I am. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so in any case, I also want to talk about um, not only that, you know, it's edible, but it also has medicinal properties. So before I get started with that, I just have to say, um, I'm a self-studied herbalist. Um, and by no means I did not go to school to be an herbalist. I just, um, really enjoy learning. So when I go into, when I'm trying to learn about something, I really take a deep dive. And so I personally used evening primrose in my journey with endometriosis. So I've, you know, really took a deep dive into it and have learned a lot about it and I just want to share that information with you. Number two, I am not a doctor. I am not your doctor and if you decide to incorporate this into your routine, talk to whoever your medical professional is. But professional, Jiminy Crickets, talk to whoever is your medical professional, whether it be an herbalist or your doctor or your naturopath, whatever the case may be, talk to your doctor. So. Um, so with that being said, this is just purely for entertainment purposes. Okay, guys. Okay, YouTube. So, but let's go ahead and talk about the medicinal values behind it. So, I personally used um, evening primrose for years and I because I had endometriosis. But my main reason behind using it was because um, I used to get hormonal headaches. And this helped with my hormonal headaches. So, um... It also is said to help with things like PMS, if you have bloating, irritability, um, depression, um, like breast tenderness, things like that, it's supposed to help with that. And it's also said if you have like maple, what are we eating? Let's not eat those. My dog, sorry. Um, so uh, where was I at? So, oh, PCOS. So if you have like, uh, it's said to maybe help with like things like... Um, uh, irregular periods so it's supposed to help regulate the periods so um, I'm saying so a lot hi baby don't eat. no 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 you stay down here wet she just went for a swim so she's all wet um, now skin conditions like um, eczema acne psoriasis this can easily be added into a salve I actually made it with a calendulus lab once um, and it can it actually has two folds so you know, like we talked about just a second ago with hormonal conditions, um, you know, that's typically used internally. But if you have acne related to hormone conditions, it should start helping out the acne. But it also can be added into salves, like I was saying, and it can be used topically or the oil itself, like evening primrose oil, can be added into your like skincare routine to help with um, the acne, psoriasis, um, eczema, and things like that. Now, if you suffer from things like uh, alopecia so hair loss in men and women um, this once again can be used in two folds whether it be internally to help balance that hormonal condition that's causing that alopecia as well as topically so I've heard um, people adding the evening primrose oil into um, their hair routine like whatever they're putting on so rosemary is super popular I'm sure you guys have heard of it people make rinses and um, use the oils and whatever the case may be or if they buy like a concoction you can add in the um, uh, evening primrose oil into that concoction and just rub it into the area and it should help with um, treating the hair. It's supposed to help with treating the hair loss. Um, now when it comes to respiratory, but first I want to say like if you are having an asthma attack, this is not going to be the thing that you go to first. Um, it is not a rescue medication. It's just used to help like re alleviate the bronchial spasm associated with it but it's not a standalone treatment for it. So things like asthma, if you have like a cough, um, as well as like allergies, you can use it as a tea to help soothe those, um, those conditions. But once again, it's not a standalone treatment for those things and it's not gonna be taking place of your rescue inhaler. So you make sure that if you're having an asthma attack, you um, use your rescue stuff. That's super important. Now, I got my notes here. So, um, uh, diabetic neuropathy, which I wasn't aware of. I was just doing some research and I saw it on there. So it's specifically diabetic neuropathy. So if you have, um, 
pain in your legs from that you can use it as a you can add it into your like salves that you're making or um things like that to rub into those areas and it's, it's supposed to help with those kind of pains and uh discomforts so they also say and this goes back to like you know edible foods in your garden is that regular consumption can actually um help reduce like cholesterol and high blood pressure now once again not something you're going to use like standalone like if you have high blood pressure or you're having issues with your cholesterol and you're trying to get it lowered it may be something you want to actually incorporate into your diet so i know this is kind of hard to hear for some people but your diet is super important for what you're doing so if you're looking for like a magic pill um like a cure-all it's going to be hard to find because everyone's looking for the magic pill and the cure-all but if you focus on like your overall self and you focus on diet, it will, it should definitely help with things like high blood pressure and cholesterol. You know, I think it's kind of crazy that we live in a world where you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, here's a pill for it. Instead of, you know, they can give you the pill. That's fine. And, you know, talk to you about it. But you should also have a um, referral to the dietitian. Because diet is super important when it comes to things like that. And um, I think that if your doctor doesn't do that, that your doctor is failing you as a medical provider. Like, it's, it's, it's super important. Diet is just super important. I know for me, I mean, my conditions, uh, I had endometriosis. Uh, well, I have a few things. But um, when I specifically focus on, like, what are my trigger foods? What, um, you know, what's causing the problem? What's not causing the problem? And I really focus on those. It helps tremendously. And when I don't incorporate those things into, you know, my diet, if I'm not incorporating like what I can and cannot eat into my diet, I notice it. it, it it's definitely a trigger for me. So it's super important to really focus on your diet. So my rant of the day, my unsolicited opinion, sorry. So yeah, so anyways, if you guys have enjoyed this content, please give me a like, subscribe down below if you could. Also, if you have like comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to try to answer them. But you have to understand that um, I'm not your doctor and I can't necessarily answer them all and as much as I want to answer them, like really I just can't do that. So, but um, I will do my best if I can answer you, I will get back to you um, with whatever questions that you guys might have. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and um, hopefully your weather's not 95 degrees and super hot in April. <laughs> uh, I hope it's not a super hot summer. So anyways, you guys take care. Bye.